Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Actually You Can. Today, we're talking all about how to set goals that stick. If you've ever struggled to set goals and stick to them, you're not alone. The good news is that setting and achieving goals is a skill that you can learn and develop with practice. There are many reasons why someone might not achieve their goals. However, a lot of common challenges we face in the pursuit of our goals, such as motivation, resource allocation, and the impact of the goal itself can actually be managed through how we set up our goal in the first place. So let's start with the basics. Why are goals important? Our brains naturally seek out things to focus on. The reticular activating system, more commonly known as the RAS, in our brain plays a significant role in this. It acts as a filter, deciding what information gets through to our conscious mind and what gets filtered out. It's like a gatekeeper that controls the information flow, allowing only what is deemed important or relevant to our goals, interest, and survival to reach our conscious awareness. For example, if you're in a noisy environment and someone calls your name, your brain will filter out the background noise and focus your attention on the person calling your name. This is one of the many reasons I feel like it's important to have goals because it is through the goal setting process that we can actively and consciously choose what we want our RAS to be focusing on. If we don't consciously choose what we want to focus on, other influences such as our environments, society, and our past experiences and beliefs will do this for us and ultimately, therefore, choose our reality. When we set goals, we activate the RAS by telling the brain what we want to focus on. Our brain then works to bring that goal into reality by filtering out distractions and highlighting relevant information that can help us achieve our goal. Understand how the RAS works can be helpful in goal setting because it can help us to be more aware of the opportunities and resources that are available to us to help us achieve our goal once it's been set. For example, if your goal is to buy a red car, you may start noticing more red cars on the road as your brain is now attuned to this particular goal. You might also start noticing ads in the paper or a car dealership that could sell a red car. But goal setting is not as simple as just picking something you want and hoping for the best. You need to be able to think of your goal tangibly. If you can't see it, feel it, or experience it in your mind, you're not going to be able to achieve it. Our brain works best when we have a clear idea of what we want and what we need to do to get there. If we want to make the pursuit of our goals more efficient and effective, that it's important that we can visualize our goals and embody what it would feel like when we achieve them. When we can do this, we are more likely to take action towards them. This is where the SMART goal setting formula comes in handy. For those who may not be familiar with this format, the SMART formula involves making sure your goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. In addition to being SMART goals, I also recommend any specific behaviors you want to be exhibiting as part of your goal that are included as part of this process. This way, you now have even more evidence that you're on track to hit your goals, or if you're not. Another thing that is important to remember is that goals must be self-initiated and self-maintained. This could be touched on in the relevant part of the SMART formula, but I want to acknowledge it specifically here. You can't solely rely on external motivation or outside sources to achieve your goals if you wish to achieve goals that are fulfilling you need to have the drive and commitment to follow through on your own. One way I recommend doing this is ensuring that your goals are aligned with your values and something that you would like to develop into a strength or a strong quality. For example, some of my highest values are achievement, strength, growth, and challenge. If I set a goal that requires me to put these values into action, I'm more likely to commit to them and for them to be meaningful goals for me because it's something that my authentic self wants to do. I also always suggest that you write your goals in the present tense. In addition to our RAS, our brain also has a cognitive bias called confirmation bias, which makes us more likely to seek out and remember information that confirms our existing beliefs or hypotheses. So if we use words like I want to, or in three months time, I will, in setting our goals, your brain will work to prove you right. And your goal will always feel like something you're striving for in the future. Instead, Try phrasing your goals as though they've already been achieved. That way, your brain can focus on the present moment and it will be much more likely to make progress towards your goal because you can actually feel yourself achieving your goal. So in saying all this, what does it all look like put together? An example of a common goal I hear is people saying that they want to lose weight. 
Instead of this, I would look to set a goal using the information I've shared earlier that looks something more like, it is the 30th of June and I'm going to the gym and following a program four times a week and eating five meals a day and including proteins and fruit and or vegetables with each meal. As a result, I now weigh X kilos. I'm feeling comfortable in my clothes and my skin has cleared up. I wake up feeling energized and like I can take on the world. This makes the goal much more concrete and easier to visualize and it is really easy to see when the goal has been achieved. And how much more compelling and exciting is a goal written like this? When setting goals, it's also easy to focus on what you don't want, but it's more effective in the long run to focus on what you do want. Sure, the primary driver for you to take action towards your goal initially may be to move away from pain. However, you'll get to a point where you've moved sufficiently away from that pain that your brain doesn't see it as something that needs to be addressed anymore. At this point, it's important if you want to sustain progress towards your goal that you think about what you do want and what pleasure you'll derive from it. Let's say you're a manager who wants to increase productivity in your team. Initially, you may focus on what you don't want, such as employees who are frequently absent or those who consistently miss deadlines. While this can be a useful starting point, it's important to shift your focus towards what you do want in order to create a more positive and motivating work environment. For example, you might visualize your team members working collaboratively and efficiently with clear communication and a sense of purpose. You might also think about the benefits of increased productivity, such as higher profits, improved customer satisfaction, and opportunities for growth and development. By focusing on these positive outcomes, you can create a more inspiring and engaging work environment that encourages your team members to take ownership of their work and strive for excellence. This can lead to increased motivation, better performance, and ultimately, greater success for your business in the long term. If you're new to goal setting, I could also recommend starting out by setting shorter term goals. Goal setting and achieving goals is like a muscle that you can train with practice. Start by setting goals with a shorter time frame and start to build the confidence within yourself that you can achieve the goals you have for yourself. Once you've successfully done this, then I would encourage you to have some fun and get creative with setting longer term goals for the future. Lastly, I want to talk about accountability when it comes to goal setting. When we're accountable to someone else, it creates an extra level of motivation and commitment to follow through on our goals. While some people are more capable of motivating themselves, I see value in having someone who you at least share your goal with because sharing your goals with others also has a profound psychological impact. Speaking your goals out loud makes them more tangible and real, increasing the likelihood that you'll take action towards achieving them. This sense of social pressure and accountability can help to keep you committed and focused especially when the going gets tough. Accountability can come in many forms. It could be a friend, family member, mentor, or even a coach. The important thing is that you choose someone who you trust and who will help keep you accountable in a positive and supportive way. If you're struggling to find an accountability partner, there are also online communities and forums where you can connect with like-minded individuals who are working towards similar goals. So to sum this all up, when looking to achieve your big goals, it's important to take the time to structure your goal in a way that can set you up for success. Using the SMART goal setting formula, visualizing and embodying your goals and phrasing them in the present tense can make them more compelling and achievable. It's also important to align our goals with our values and focus on what we do want instead of what we don't want. Finally, start by practicing the skill of goal setting by building confidence with setting shorter term goals and enroll an accountability buddy to be your biggest cheerleader and support on your journey. Keep these tips in mind as you set and pursue your goals and you'll be well on your way to creating goals that stick because like I always say, actually, you can. Thank you for joining me today for another episode of the Actually You Can podcast. I so enjoy having you here and I hope you've taken away powerful insights and tools that will support you to achieve your high level results. Now, before you go apply all this wisdom in your life, I would be so grateful if you are able to leave us a podcast review on the platform that you're listening to or share this episode with a friend. Your support means that we can help more self-led, high-performing individuals just like you expand what's possible for them. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on today's episode. So please go on and shoot me a note on socials and let me know what you think. You can find me on Instagram as Miff Galloway. Now go make those dreams a reality because actually you can. Speak to you soon.